We've got a crime theme on the programme this evening. Uh, our main guest at 11.20 is going to be Kate Cray, who is the former wife of Ronnie Cray, and she's also now written a book about hard men. And she's also bringing with her somebody called Big Bad John. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a TV presenter. <laughs> to me, being a presenter was better than being an assistant manager in Shoe Express. Even before I first wandered into the Generation Game audience, I knew I wanted to be part of the BBC. To me, it meant being a Jeremy Paxman in a neighbourhood that was full of Tanya Briars. <laughs> and though my pocket may be empty, I'd be a millionaire. But in my heart I'd be a king Your love is all that ever matters 1,100 jobs are to go right here at the BBC. <laughs> Well, we're pretty much split on that news here. Uh, <laughs> uh, the BBC has decided to head down the route of replacing the traditional jobs within broadcasting with what's known as multi-skilled taskers. Um, so what we thought we would do tonight, to explain to you, multi-skilling is basically when you take a person and teach them to do more than one job, thus, I guess, improving on efficiency and economy and whatever. So basically it means that people have to do more than one job. It's called multi-skilling, I think, is the nice word for it. Uh, so in the spirit of these new reforms, um, uh, we're going to ask our camera supervisor, Alan Bailey, who's working on camera one. He's going to start multi-skilling. So Alan is now going to read out our remaining jokes on this BBC story. Alan? No, I'll just do the sound as well. OK. Um, other money-saving measures are expected to be introduced, the most controversial being the kidnapping of David Jason, so that a replica bodysuit could be made of him. Two dwarves could then be operated from inside him, producing many more shows at a fraction of the cost. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Alan Bailey, multi-skilling for us. Oh, no, Alan. Oh, you mean that? There we go. I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> There you go. So this, we, we, we kind of want to show that we're streamlined and we're sort of, you know, uh, getting... Th hey, what's going on here? I'm just doing a bit of, you know, multi-skilling, uh, mate. That's so cool. Jamie is operating camera five and shaving at the same time. <laughs> right. That's, that's great. That's, that's the spirit of the new BBC. <laughs> Can we just watch this for a little longer? How is that, Mark? Is that all right? Oh! Oh, oh, sorry. It would be good to do that when you actually are being shaved. <laughs> be, my, be my one acting note there, Mark. <laughs> all right. Actually, I came into security today. We all frisk when you came into security. You know who, you know who frisked me today? The Dimblebees. <laughs> doesn't seem right, does it? Dimblebees frisking you as you come into the building. That's not what a Dimblebee should be doing. Uh, today's also the day that the Middle East Peace Summit enters its second day. Uh, President Clinton, we found this footage today of uh, Clinton here with Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak and Yasser Arafat. <laughs> just, <laughs> what hope do these talks have? We're just wondering. <laughs> now we present an item that we hope will become a regular feature of the show. It's called, What Would Paul Coyer Do? Israel's ultra-Orthodox Shaz party has left Ehud Barak's governing coalition in the run-up to tomorrow's Palestinian-Israeli summit. The question is, should the Shaz party have left Barak's government or remained with a governing coalition? Well, tonight we ask, what would Paul Coyer do? Well, if it was up to me, I would stick with Ehud Barak's governing coalition. It's a difficult time, but there's too much at stake, so stick with it. I've been having an email correspondence with, uh, with a certain newscaster on News24 lately. His name is Matthew Amrilawalla and I don't know if you're aware of his work. He is a great newscaster, but there is something about him. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's, it, there's a whole look. I, there's something about him. I cannot stop looking at the man, and, and I'm not alone on the staff here. And what we've done is compile for you a month of news in the life of Matthew Amrilla Wallace. See if you can get into him the way I did. British stores. And the shame South African cricket captain Hansi Cronier has admitted taking money from bookmakers. Good afternoon, this is BBC News 24 with Jane Hill and Matthew Emerly Waller. 
Well, the Foreign Secretary, Robin Cook, has just been talking to journalists at the Foreign Office about Sierra Leone. Two of Britain's best-known companies have announced disappointing annual results. Police are searching for a man who hijacked a passenger jet in the Philippines. We've got weather coming up for you in a moment. The government of Sierra Leone has ordered all children fighting in its army to return to the capital, Freetown. Now, the Welsh Assembly has set itself on a potential collision course. The Islamic separatist group holding 21 people captive. The United Nations peacekeepers have come under fire. Now, within the last few minutes, the new mayor of London, Ken Livingston, has agreed to set up. Hello, this is BBC News 24 with Rebecca Jones and Matthew Emery Warner. Ford has confirmed that it's to end car production. The Home Secretary, Jack Straw, condemned the mindless violence. A gynaecologist accused of incompetence or job losses have been announced today. The government of Sierra Leone Fans start to arrive in Shalawa, Britain's defence secretary. To the musicians involved, more than a thousand British troops. The lethal cocktail of John Prescott, it's on each diamond. Let's get the rest of the day's business news. Got weather coming up before the time has just gone 4.30. Let's have a summary of today's top stories. We're seven days into the run, and one of the things that we've noticed here at the recommended daily allowance is the different kind of hats that you can get. Uh, skull caps, Homburgs, bowlers, sombreros, Panamas, uh, flat caps, and you know, unless somebody's starting off with colour, I mean, the great thing are the different colours. Some days, this camera feels more like my wife, waltzing around the studio together in a high-tech embrace. I see what the camera sees, feel what it feels, and John's face is making my wife and I sick. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, the other thing about hats is, um, hats Maybe it's just because I'm really young, but John looks so much older off camera. I wish I didn't have to look at him. He reminds me of death. <laughs> That's something you really need to be looking at. Because the thing with... I think it was... 13 real... shows to go. Christ, how am I going to explain this on my CV? <laughs> I think baseball caps really... 13 nice. shows to go. Woohoo! Christ, really this is definitely going on the CV. <laughs> God, he's good. He's got the audience eating out of his hands. <laughs> very strange, very odd occurrence. Um, when you have the hat... Jail. That's it. I'll say I was in jail. <laughs> it's, you know, and the, the colours, you've got your grey, your beige, your off-white and cream. So there we are. I mean, you know, look at the middle of the article. So did you come to see lots of shows? Mm. Uh, we've been to the London Palladium. This is our... And, and, how, and how is this comparing to the London Palladium <laughs> experience? <laughs> Who was on at the Palladium? Bruce Forsyth. Bruce Forsyth. Now, that would seem to me that, that's proper, right? Mm. <laughs> That's who he wants. <laughs> I'm not talking to you anymore, I feel like. <laughs> Modern Britain is a strange place, and in the process of researching this programme, we uncovered a mountain of unusual material which, to be honest with you, we didn't know quite what to make of, but we found odd and funny and sometimes disturbing. So with this in mind, we've called the next segment of the programme, This Has Nothing To Do With Us. Um, tonight we bring you something called Women's Apartment Wrestling. <laughs> now, as I say, we don't quite know what to make of it, but one thing's for certain, we can't look away. <laughs> Here it is. W-A-W. Make no mistake, my friends, the wrestling you see today will be real. None of the carefully choreographed moves of the professional wrestling, but real women who want to fight. Underground wrestling, raw and hard-edged. That's right, Paul, and this week you find us in Walthamstow, described as some as the New Islington. And you join us on the Bracknell Housing Estate in Walthamstow, where we're about to go into Lisa Charlton's house to see today's wrestling. That's right, she's agreed to let us in and film the fights today, so we're privy to some real private action. Come on in and enjoy the show. My name's Lisa Charlton, I'm 29 years old. I've got three children and a partner called Jay. I think um, Kim's gonna give me a run for my money. Uh, my partner really wants me to win. He reckons if I don't win, he's going to beat me afterwards. <laughs> um, Kim, what do you do for a living? I'm a sales assistant. That's great. What kind of company is that? It's a bakery in Walthamstow. That's great. I love bread. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. The wrestling's about to start, but before we do, Paul will go quickly through the rules. The rules are very simple. The fight's over when the bell rings, and we're looking for the best of three rounds, ending in a submission or a three-second controlling hold. Let the fights begin. The first bout is between Kim and Lisa. Take your positions, please.
Sorry you didn't win, but yeah. there's your runners-up trophy, you. WAW. Cheers. Lisa, congratulations. You. You're this year's WAW Championship. What a Thank champion. Give it up. Well, Lisa. Excellent. Well, that's Women's Department Wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. From your living room. To your living room. We'll see you next time. Just went off. With me is uh, Daniel Singer, who is 17. Daniel has been on... Uh, experience with us this week and she wants to be a TV presenter when she grows up it says here I think you're 17 I think yeah. I think we can assume you're growing. nearly 18 yeah. when will you be 18 September September well there's a there's there's a date in all our calendars um, <laughs> anyway uh, uh, so basically Danielle you've been kind of bending my ear all week about saying come on let me on so so Danielle now who you know is gonna is gonna read some jokes out for uh, out, out for us so let's go off you go Danielle Robbie Williams has done a runner from Stringfellow's lap dancing club owing £300. He later told the press, I paid for the champagne. I just thought the crisps were complimentary. <laughs> the stray sprinter, Ben Johnson, was outrun by a gypsy woman who had picked his pocket. Police later caught the woman and put her speed down to her possession as some incredibly lucky Heather. <laughs> It's a comedy show, not a football match. Can I say that? <laughs> You're watching the recommended daily allowance on BBC Choice for Thursday the 13th of July. If you'd like to get in touch, the details will be on screen as we play for you this videotape compilation of bulls running and politicians getting flanned, which has been nominated for a Patricia Rothermere Award. There we go. All right. So let me show you an ad that we placed in the papers. It's coming up here. Uh, the ad says, could your life be made easier with a film crew? Maybe you've got difficult news to break, you need backup with a complaint, or think it might impress a hot date. All ideas welcome. So basically, uh, a number of people responded to the ad. We thought, why not use our technology once again for good? Uh, and the first person that we spoke to, who I think we're going to do tonight, is a dustman by the name of Colin Baines. Let's find out how we were able to make his life easier. Hello, Colin. Colin, it's John here from the BBC. Oh, hello, John. How are you doing? What could we help you to do that you couldn't do without a film crew? Well, basically, make our lives a little bit easier uh, to see what we do and to show, basically, the residents, you know, how hard dustmen do work. Hi, Colin. Hello. Hey, right, good morning. Now you keep it, all right, guys? Uh, so, the, the first question is then, how would a camera crew make your life easier? Well, because the amount of rubbish that we have to pull out and if at the end of the day we didn't do our overtime, half of this borough wouldn't be cleared. Okay, and you want, to, you, you, you want that on TV just to show what a, what a rough deal you get? Yes, very much so. It is extremely hard work. I mean, if you guys want to, you know, join us, you know, you can help load. <laughs> we don't mind. 